Hello and welcome to this session. My name is Leroy Meadows and we're going to work out uh, an example on spoilage using process costing. Um, this is going to be exercise 18-29 at the end of your chapter uh, on the spoilage rework and scrap. So let's go ahead and get started here. Logic Company is a fast growing manufacturer of computer chips. Direct materials are added at the start of the production process. Conversion costs are added evenly during the process. Some units of this product are spoiled as a result of defects not detectable before inspection of finished goods. Spoiled units are disposed of at zero net disposal value. Logic Company uses the weighted average method of process costing. And so we're given this information here about the number of physical units, how complete they are, the value of beginning work in process inventory, total cost added in, degree of completion, ending work in process inventory, uh, and degree of completion of abnormal and normal spoilage here. So it says for each cost category, compute equivalent units. And remember, cost categories are what we are tracking, direct materials and conversion costs here. So for each cost category, compute equivalent units, show physical units in the first column of your schedule, and then requirement two, uh, summarize total cost to account for, calculate the cost per equivalent unit of each cost category, and then assign cost to units completed and transferred out, including normal spoilage, to abnormal spoilage, and to units in ending work and process inventory. So let's go ahead and get started here. When we're going to do step one, we're going to uh, complete our physical units, and we're going to count for all those units. So let's take from the information we have. We have our beginning work and process inventory of, what, 900 units? And then we have, what, units started during September 2754. So how many units do we have to account for? We have to account for 3,654 3, units. Now, how many units were transferred out during the period? We're told in the problem here on the right-hand side here that we transferred out 2,500 units. Our work in process has 490 units, or ending work in process inventory. So how many units have I uh, calculated so far? How many units have I accounted for so far? So when I pull up my calculator here, I'm going to take the amount I had to account for. All right, let's see. How many have I accounted for so far? 2,500 plus 490. So 2,990 units. So I had to account for 3,654 units. So the difference between what I've accounted for, 2,990 units, and what I had to account for, 3,654 units, that's going to be the number of spoiled units. It's going to be 664 units. Now we have to determine here what percentage of that or what number of this is normal spoilage and what is abnormal spoilage. So how do we do that? Well. We are told here that normal spoilage as a percentage of good units is 15%. So, oh, so good units transferred out, 2,500. So let's multiply that by 15%. And I get 375 units of normal spoilage. So my normal spoilage is 375 units. But... I had total spoilage of how much? I had total spoilage of 664 units. So when I subtract my normal spoilage from my total spoilage, I will have my abnormal spoilage of 289 units. So now have I accounted for all the units that I needed to account for? Yes, I have. 3,654 units. Now, Let's compute our equivalent units, step two. Well, the good units transferred out are going to be fully completed for direct materials and conversion costs. 
Now, where in the production process do we test? So, because I have normal spoilage of 375 units, but where do we test it at? Do we test it at 30% mark, the 50% mark, or the 100% mark? Well, we're told that in the pro in the uh, problem here that some units are spoiled as a result of defects not detectable before inspection of finished goods. So these are units that have got all of their direct materials and all of their conversion costs. So these are going to be fully completed units. It's just that they're not any good. So I'm going to compute my equivalent units for those. So they are fully complete with respect to drip materials and conversion costs. So I'm going to compute my equivalent units for normal spoilage. Now I'm going to do my abnormal spoilage. And now I'm going to uh, compute my equivalent units of work and process ending inventory. And I'm told here that work and process ending inventory, they're 100% complete for drip materials, 10% complete for conversion costs. So 100% complete for direct materials and conversion costs are 10% complete. So 490 times 10% is 49. So what's my total equivalent units of work done to date? Well, for direct materials, it's going to be what? 3,654. For conversion costs, it is going to be 3,000 213. So now we're going to need to come back to that, but first we're going to move forward and calculate our beginning work and process inventory. Our materials work, uh, direct materials work and process inventory, we're told in the problem over here 125,766. And then I also have 10,000. $368 worth of conversion costs. So total so my total value of my end, uh, beginning inventory is how much? 136,134. Now how many how much it cost did I add in? Well costs added during September I added 619,650 of truck materials. And I added in, what, $253,098 worth of conversion costs. So how much in total cost did I add in during the period? 872748 so what's my total direct convert my total conversion costs to account for? Two hundred sixty-three thousand four hundred sixty-six. And then for direct materials, how much do I have to account for total from a beginning inventory plus the cost added in during the period? Seven hundred forty-five thousand four hundred sixteen. And so that's total cost I have to account for across the board. One million eight thousand. $882. Now remember, under the weighted average method, which is the method we're doing in this chapter, or in this session, we're taking our total cost to account for, and we're going to divide that by equivalent units of work done to date. And that's what we computed up in step two. And when I do that, I will get a cost per equivalent unit of $204. And let me just make sure there's no rounding issues there. And then for, that was for direct materials. And for conversion costs, my cost per equivalent unit is $82. So now, Having my cost per equivalent unit, I can now value the units completed and transferred out. I can now value 
my normal spoilage costs. I can now value my abnormal spoilage, and I can now value my ending work in process inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll take my cost per equivalent unit. I'm going to multiply that by my good units transferred out during the period for both direct materials and conversion costs. Now I see the cost before adding in normal spoilage, $715,000. Again, how did I calculate that? I did it for each cost category. I took my, two, my cost per equivalent unit for direct materials times the equivalent units for good units transferred out for direct materials up here in step two. And I did the same thing for conversion costs. Now, let's calculate the cost of normal spoilage. I want to take my cost per equivalent unit of 204 and multiply that by the equivalent units for normal spoilage for direct materials, and I get 76500 I'm going to do the same thing for conversion costs, and I'm going to get normal spoilage as a total, 107250 76500 that's direct materials, 30750 worth of conversion costs. So what is the total cost of good units completed and transferred out? That is going to be what? Oops. Let me go back here. That would be 822,250. Now, using my uh, cost per equivalent unit, I can now value my abnormal spoilage by taking my cost per equivalent unit and times the number of equivalent units of abnormal spoilage. I'll do that for both direct materials and conversion costs. And my abnormal spoilage will value $82,654. Now I can value my ending work and process inventory by doing the same thing, taking my cost per equivalent unit times the equivalent units of uh, direct materials, 490. And my direct materials and ending inventory is 99960 my conversion costs when I do the same thing are $4,018. So what's my total conversion cost to account for? It's simply going to be Seven hundred and forty five thousand four hundred and sixteen with regards to direct materials. Conversion costs are going to be two hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and sixty six. The cost of good units before spoilage plus normal spoilage plus the cost of abnormal spoilage plus the cost of work end and working process inventory. My total cost to accounted for should equal the same as my total cost to account for. So I've accounted for all my costs here, and I've also done this within uh, the bounds of, uh, or within the situation of process costing. Again, the difference between process costing with and without spoilage is the fact that we're tracking spoilage in here. We're going to, as separate line items, so we're going to compute normal spoilage and abnormal spoilage the same. If it's at the end of the process, then they're 100% complete. If it's at the 55% of the process, then we're going to then we're going to compute those a little bit differently. And then I also value everything here too. And one thing to note that when I'm doing my journal entry, this is going to be the dollar amount total cost of good units completed and transferred out is going to include my normal spoilage. Why is that? Because remember that normal spoilage is inherent in the production process even when we have efficient conditions. 
So this is unavoidable. So therefore, I'm going to include those costs. However, abnormal spoilage right here is avoidable. So since that is avoidable, we're going to treat that as a separate line item on the income statement, uh, which would then be a period cost. So this is Leroy Meadows. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.